In most power relationships, you have the victim trying to solve the situation. And I don't want to create narratives of victimhood. I want to flip it. The freedom that I offer in each painting is in the mutable body. In having bodies in constant transition, it leaves it open for the viewer to shift ideas of power. In that process, you shift the world around you. That's where beauty can be subversive. I, if it were up to me, I'd be a hermit in some mountain seascape. And I'd have my giant space with open windows and f if rain comes in. That's the dream. But I remember always making, from the time I was like six. Other kids would have me draw out these very fancy mariquitas for them. And I would have these like elaborate ball gowns. And they would always have very intricate hair. I was always dealing with the body. My earliest childhood was in Loma de Cabrera, which is right at the border of Dominican Republic and Haiti. Should you go straight out from that southeast end of Cuba, you will come next to the second largest island of the romantic archipelago. We will make all these assumptions of what it is to be someone from the Caribbean. And when you fall outside that, then you can get something better. One of the first reasons I wanted to work on these paintings was looking at some of the first scientific illustration of flora and fauna from the New World, looking at Carl Linnaeus. Here's this guy who was the foundation of modern scientific methods of observation and categorization. But so much of his work was sheer nonsense. It equated the New World black and brown body with bestiality. In telling of what the New World people were, you'd be next to cannibals and vampires. So leaning into their already fallible vision and making something new. In reading my paintings of Siguapas, I'm asking the viewer, to come to terms with their own feelings around a woman's body. The Siguapa is this trickster figure. She's a seductress. Someone will be lured by her and then be completely lost and never seen again. The description is so ambiguous. It could be anything from like a mongoose to the most beautiful woman to the most ugly woman. The only certain thing is that her legs are backwards. If you followed their footsteps, you were going in the wrong direction. And that she has this lustrous mane of hair. She was meant to be something that made us so fearful that we could be quiet for long enough to be groomed into civility. <laughs> The normative tone of the story is these are wanton female creatures, they're hypersexual and they derail culture. And the under story is they're highly independent, they're self-possessed, 
and they feel deeply. So who would want to be that? What was exciting in using that image was to be able to incorporate all those things that were labeled abject, that were seen as unwanted, and reframe them as something beautiful and with an eye of desire. I recently went to one of my aunts and she was like, you know, I never would have thought you would be an artist. And she's the one who was kind of raising us when I was about seven. And I think for her, she just saw it as like um, a little bit of troublemaking. Because I'd be the one trying to sew paper together and getting my finger stuck in the needle. <laughs> like sewing right through my finger. But I was just like, I'm going to bind my book. It's going to be the thing. I'm going to make it perfect. They did call me, I don't know if it was the demolisher or the hellion. <laughs> Whenever I imagine a painter, it's someone who's very composed, kind of like a lady painter. But I feel like a car mechanic. My mom is a master seamstress. She can make really beautiful things, but she was so caught up in 100 hour work week that she always does things for bare function. It makes for a lot of precarity. So none of the things that you build tend to last. So I'm trying to break that cycle and teach my nephews and nieces to think of themselves as part of longer cycles behind them and long cycles before them. And that every choice that we make is predicated by the people we hope to love in the future and the people we love in the past. It's always within your grasp to make something new. It's exhausting, but limitless.